Welcome back everybody to the next session. Today we're going to be working on a movement called flower with the sword, with the straight sword. And I practice it here with the sword. Uh, you can practice it with any kind of stick, sword, anything that you can hold in one hand, uh, katana, anything like that. So if you have like a rattan stick like this, you do this flower movement. But I'm going to be showing it to you today with the straight sword just so it's easier to see uh, from your angle. And it's just going to be a turning movement with the wrist and the waist working together. Uh, if you've done this movement before, uh, I'd like to give some pointers. And it's going to be a similar principle to uh, what we've done the last few sessions with the wheel arm, where you're turning the waist and that's propelling the arm. The same thing's going to happen here, where you're going to be turning the waist and it's going to be propelling the wrist. You're just going to turn the sword or the stick, whatever it is you're holding. Uh, so follow along. Uh, first off, of course, you got to make sure your arm is warmed up, your shoulders warmed up. And I also want to I also want to point out something from the last few movements. So I started to see some videos of people who practice the wheel arm movement, and uh, it's really awesome to see, see people's progress. And I just had a pointer that I want to uh, add as, as a note for that movement. So some people have got turning the arms really, really strong, really good, and really coordinated. Then you also want to add your eyes to it as well. Uh, my teacher used to say that you have to shoot out your, your spirit from your eyes, your jingshan from your, from your eyes with every movement you do. So it's a coordination of your hips, your legs, your wrist, your body, and your emotion, your spirit, your, your focus. So when you're doing this movement, some people, you know, had the arms going but the head kind of down here, and you see how it's, it's not a full movement, you want to add your head to it. So there's a couple options you can do when you do that. When you turn your waist, you can look the direction you're turning. So when I turn right, I can look right, turn left, that's one way. And another option is to follow your hand with your eyes, so you come here follow it through more of like a circular motion but whatever you decide to do just make sure you have your your uh, you know your gaze your focus as part of the movement so it's not just your hands moving not just your legs moving your eyes are there uh, as well so now moving on to today's movement with the stick or straight sword in the one hand uh, this movement called the flower is going to be applicable to anything anything that you hold with one hand it's just going to be an extension of your of your wrist turning if you have weapons that are more along the lines of staff or spear, it's going to be slightly different principles because you'll be using both hands with that. So I might get into that later. But for now, I'm going to start with this. Uh, we'll hold it in. Uh, you can do a mirror image, so I'll hold it in my right hand. You can hold it in your left. The movement's going to start with the stick or sword up and holding pretty tight, but ready to relax your wrist, ready to almost, almost let go. You do the spin. So you start with the sword up, and I usually start almost with it against my shoulder, so I can begin as though I'm pushing it away on the first movement. So the first movement, you're pushing the sword away, and you're going to slice down, let it drop down, and really relax your wrist so it can swing back up in front. Cut, drop, come back up. You're pushing the sword away from you, let it drop, come back up. When you spin it in front, or when you spin it anyway, you want your wrist to really relax, and as I was saying, almost, almost letting go of your grip. Never completely letting go, because you still want to have connection to the sword. But you start very tight, you push it away, and then let, almost let momentum carry it back up. I push it away, and let it drop, and come back up. Okay? From here, away, drop, and come back up. The more you have your wrist relaxed, the more you can just let the weight of the object carry it around, whether it's a sword or a stick. You start by pushing it away and then let it, let it slide back, let it swing back. So away and then back up, away and back up. So that's a downward cut in front. You're starting kind of at your shoulder, pushing it away, and picture you're really chopping something. Chopping and then let it come back up. Chop, come back up. Cut in front. So that's a downward in front. Same way when we did wheel arms, we had the different directions, a down in front, down behind, down in front, down behind, and we also had up in front, up behind, up, up. We have those same four options with the sword. So we just did down in front, and you come back to, this will be our home position. Now you want to cut and let it fall behind your wrist. Almost let go. This is down behind. So we had down in front, come back up home down behind, come back up. 
almost like you're just dropping the sword, dropping the stick, letting gravity let it fall, and then you pick it back up, let it fall, and you pick it back up again. Let it fall in front, relax your wrist, come back up. Let it fall behind, relax your wrist, come back up. The same thing with the stick. Fall in front and then just keep going behind. In front, behind, in front, behind, back and forth. So practice a few times. Uh, looking away just so you can see it from behind, it's the same thing. Chopping it in front, chopping it behind. In front, and as soon as it comes back up, just let it keep dropping. Drop, pick up, drop, pick up, drop, pick up, drop, pick up. In front, behind, in front, behind. Practice with the other hand just to balance it out. So now the sword will be in your right hand. And if you're doing the mirror image here, you're starting here. Push the sword away, let it fall, and then let it rise up just in front of your body, really close to your body. Like get comfortable with it so you know you're not going to you know, make contact with your face. You're just going to let it fall and rise up in front of you. And this time, the next time, let it fall behind you. Rise up behind. So one cut in front, come back up, then let it fall behind, come back up. In front, behind. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. Once in front, once behind. And it's the same thing, whatever object you're holding. You just start with it up, push it once in front, bring it back up, once behind, bring it back up. And I'm almost letting go, but I'm never, never completely let, losing contact. I'm just relaxing the wrist so I can get a, a fluid motion and let the, let the momentum of it carry around in a full circle, once in front, once behind. All right, so what you want to add to that now, once you've kind of got the, the sense of the, the full motion, one in front, one behind, now you want to unify your whole body, have your whole body working together. So just doing this, you're only working your wrist. You're only using your wrist to cut. And it's not a very full circle. It's not a very harmonious movement. You want to engage your whole body. You should be cutting, cutting with your whole body, pushing from your waist, just like in the past few movements. So when I cut in front, I'm not just using my wrist to go down. I'm using my waist. I'm pushing. So this will be holding the sword with your left hand. You're going to push to your right with your waist on that first cut pushing away from the sword. When you decide to do the cut behind, now you're gonna pull, pull to your left. So you're pushing away to your right with your waist, pulling to your left with your waist. Pushing on the front cut, pulling on the behind cut. Pushing in front, pulling behind. So now when you're doing the movement, you have your hip involved with it. You know, you're here, pushing to the right, pulling to the left. Pushing to the right, pulling to the left. With the other hand, the right hand, now you're going to be cutting. When you cut in front, you're now pushing to the left. When you let it fall behind, you're pulling to the right with your hips. Pushing, pulling, pushing, pulling. Yeah. Pushing, pulling. When you cut in front, you're pushing, pushing from the hips. And when you cut behind, pulling. This way. Same thing with the stick. I'm pushing away. When I do the front circle, push away. Back circle, pull. Push, pull. Push, pull. Uh, we have two directions though. That's a downward circle. Downward in front, downward behind. You can also fling it back up. Upward behind. Come here. And then up in front. Come back. Up behind. Up in front. Go in. Up, behind, up, in front. And that's just the same principle of starting with the sword. Well, when you're doing, when I lift it up, I'll sometimes start with the sword down. So that way I can toss it up, let it fall behind me, come back here, toss it up, in front, behind, in front. You can do it with either hand from here, toss up behind, toss up in front. And then the same thing. Same thing as before is that you want to use your waist now. When you pick it up behind, uh, you can, it, it's the same as when you're doing the downward circle. Picking it up behind, you're turning. Picking it up in front, you're turning again. One, two, one, two. 
uh, I'll kind of leave that up to you to practice and figure out exactly the best way to turn your hips, the best way to uh, synchronize your hips with your wrists and all this sort of thing. But once you've practiced a bit and you really have the flowers going uh, in a smooth, smooth motion, then you can add stuff to it. You know, you can turn around with it, you can do all sorts of things. You can stop with it, cut, pick back up, you know, um, and play around with it. And we can, we can put those movements together later on. But I just want to give you an introduction of how to turn, turn the wrist and turn the waist together and let the momentum, let the momentum of the sword carry you around. All right, I uh, hope you enjoyed the lesson this time. Uh, let me know any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time. Take care.